Explorers find World War II ships sunk with over 1,000 Allied POWs. Sydney. A team of explorers announced it found a sunken Japanese ship that was transporting Allied prisoners of war when it was torpedoed off the coast of the Philippines in 1942, resulting in Australia's largest maritime wartime loss with a total of 1,080 lives. The wreck of the Montevideo Maru was located after a 12-day search at a depth of over 4,000 meter, 13,120 feet deeper than the Titanic, off Luzon Island in the South China Sea, using an autonomous underwater vehicle with inbuilt sonar. There will be no efforts to remove artifacts or human remains out of respect for the families of those who died, said a statement Saturday from the Sydney-based Silent World Foundation, a not-for-profit dedicated to maritime archaeology and history. It took part in the mission together with Dutch Deep Sea Survey Specialists Fugro and Australia's Defence Department. The extraordinary effort behind this discovery speaks for the enduring truth of Australia's solemn national promise to always remember and honour those who served our country, Australian Prime Minister Anthony Albanese said. This is the heart and the spirit of lest we forget. The Montevideo Maru was transporting prisoners and civilians who were captured after the fall of Rabaul in Papua New Guinea. The ship was not marked as carrying POWs, and on July 1, 1942, the American submarine Sturgeon, after stalking the ship through the night, fired four torpedoes, which found their target, sinking the vessel in less than ten minutes. Those killed included 1,080 people from 14 nations, including 979 Australians. Families waited years for news of their missing loved ones before learning of the tragic outcome of the sinking, said Silent World director John Mullen. Some never fully came to accept that their loved ones were among the victims. Today, by finding the vessel, we hope to bring closure to the many families devastated by this terrible disaster. Miri Rigev, the government minister in charge of the main celebration on Tuesday night, has threatened to throw out anyone who disrupts it. The event takes place at a plaza next to Israel's National Cemetery in Jerusalem where the country abruptly shifts from solemn Memorial Day observances for fallen soldiers to the joy of Independence Day, complete with a symbolic torchlighting ceremony, military marches and musical and dance performances. Opposition leader Yair Lapid is boycotting the ceremony. You have torn Israeli society apart, and no phony fireworks performance can cover that up, he said. The rift is so wide that Israel's longest-running and perhaps most pressing problem, its open-ended military rule over the Palestinians, barely gets mentioned despite a recent surge in violence. Even before the protests erupted, public discourse was mostly limited to the militaries dealing with the conflict, rather than the future of the territories Israel captured in the 1967 Mideast War, which Palestinians seek for their state. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, a polarizing leader revered by supporters and reviled by opponents, has played a key role in the crisis. The divisions gained steam as he was indicted on corruption charges in 2019. Israel barreled through five cycles of elections in under four years, all of them focused on Netanyahu's fitness to rule. Late last year, Netanyahu finally eked out a victory, cobbling together the most right-wing government in Israel's history. Within days, it set out to overhaul the judicial system and give Netanyahu's allies the power to overturn court decisions and appoint judges. The plan, which critics see as a transparent power grab, 
has triggered unprecedented protests that ultimately forced Netanyahu to freeze it. In a reflection of the deep mistrust, the protests have only grown larger, exposing deeper fault lines in Israeli society that go back decades.